Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going through the new replace feature of Pseudo Effect Maker. And you can see over here on the left, I have just a very simple control. And we're going to apply that to our layer in After Effects. Now let's say we're working and we want to change the names of our controls. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And now we want to update this. So I'm going to make sure we have our effect selected over here in the effect panel. And I'm going to hit replace. And you can see that immediately all of those names update. Now that's great, but I didn't have any expressions or keyframes applied. And that's when you can really see the benefit of using this replace feature. So we're going to come into After Effects and we're just going to alt click rotation and add just a quick time times 10 expression just to give us some changing values of that rotation. So let's say we're working and now we want this rotation value to be at the bottom of the list. Make sure we have our control selected over here. Hit replace. And you can see that the order has been changed, but that expression is still there. And if we bring it up, over here in the timeline, you can see that we have actually moved that expression. And that works the same way for keyframes. So let's say we have a keyframe on the checkbox, then we come down here and we keyframe it again. Bring those up just so we can see them. So we have those two keyframes. But now we want to move the enabled property to the middle. Make sure it's selected, hit replace. You can see the pseudo effect's been updated. And if we come over here and bring up those expressions and keyframes, you can see that those two keyframes are still in the exact same spot that they were but the control's been updated. So I'm gonna unset those for now. Uh, replace is also extremely useful when you're working with invisible controls. So let's make this rotation control invisible. If we select it over here in the pseudo effect maker and we scroll down, you can see that rotation actually doesn't have the ability to be set as invisible. However, when the control is invisible, like let's say a slider or a point control or anything else, you actually don't have the ability to set keyframes on it directly. So the way we wanna work with this is by creating a new group, placing rotation property into the group, and then making the group itself invisible. So let's do that, create a new group, drag rotation down. I'm not gonna worry about the group's name since the control's invisible anyway. But now once the group is made invisible, we're not gonna be able to see this expression. So let's connect our enabled property to the rotation property through expressions so that we can see that something's still actually happening. So I'm gonna alt click enable, and I'm going to pick whip rotation. And I'm just going to create a simple expression um, just to allow us to see some changing values. So we're going to take the value and we're going to round it down. And if it's an even value, uh, then we're going to have it checked. And if it's an odd value, it'll be unchecked. So let's see to make sure this is working. So you can see that as a changing values, the checkbox is going up and down. Let me actually change round to floor. Not that it really matters, but now you can see that when it's 261, the checkbox is unchecked, and when it's 260, it's checked. So as we're going through, we can see that the checkbox is going to be flashing on and off. So once again, we'll make sure our control is selected. We'll come up here and click Replace. Down the timeline, you can see we still have that expression on our control. And as we scrub through, that enable property is still flashing on and off, but obviously our rotation control is not visible. So that's how you can work with invisible controls and it's made really simple with the replace function. And if we wanna work with it again, come into the group, uncheck invisible, replace again. And then once again, you can easily work with your rotation property. The same thing can be done with keyframes. If you wanna set keyframes and then make that control invisible, you can constantly go back and forth making those replacements. Now, one thing to note is that this replacement that's happening automatically right now isn't perfect. There's gonna be cases, especially if you make major changes to your control between replacements, like I've been making one change and then replacing, one change and then replacing. If you're making lots of changes and then trying to replace, there's a chance that the automatic replacement of your control won't work. If it fails with enough uncertainty, it's gonna bring up a manual replacement window. However, if you'd like to replace manually all the time, that's actually an option in the preferences. So if we scroll down here, you can see always match manually is a preference you can select. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to hit save. So let's make another quick change. Let's throw this enable property into our group. And then we'll also just change the group's name. So now once again, make sure we have our effect selected, hit replace, and we get the custom mapping window. Now we do have this auto option, which will do its best to create those connections. But you can see we have three controls showing up in here. 
because the group is not part of this auto mapping. And at the same time, you can also see that the control that's going to be replacing the old control is visible in our effect panel. So the way you connect manually is you select the control that you want and you select its match over here on the right and then you hit connect. And it's gonna show you your list of mappings down here at the bottom. So right now you can actually see that all of these are in order with what they're going to be. Select both, hit connect, select both, hit connect. And now we've created our mapping and we hit replace and it will go and map those things out. So let's see when they're not in order. I'll just drag this out of the group into the bottom of the list and I'll hit replace again. Once again, the window comes up. You can see that now we have sort of a mismatch as far as these rows. Primary again, hit connect, enabled to enabled, hit connect, and rotation to rotation, hit connect. And then we can apply that and complete the replace. Now let me just show you the auto real quick. So I'm gonna hit the auto button and you can see that it actually did a good job of automatically making the same map that we did. Let's say you got it wrong. What you can do is select the connection that you wanna break hit the break button, and then you can create the new connections as you want. Now, obviously this is wrong, but I just wanted to show you how that's done, but I will cancel that. Um, so that's really all there is to replacing. You have two options for automatic or manual replacement. It's extremely useful for dealing with uh, invisible controls and just working in general. So you're able to update your control without having to worry about manually recreating all the expressions and all the work that you've already put into your control. It just is a big time saver. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.